Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Yes, you read that title correctly, so let's jump right in. And special thanks to Adam K for sharing this. If you're not familiar with Frank Turek, he's the president of Cross Examined. In the About section, we read that Dr. Frank Turek is a dynamic speaker and award-winning author or co-author of five books. He has a TV program called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist and does seminars on college campuses as well. He also has a YouTube channel with a large amount of subscribers. I watched several of videos calling him out, and they all seem to be from atheists. I also listened to a bunch of his other teachings and have to say that I find him to be a good teacher. But there is one area we should be aware of, and that's finding God in Hollywood heroes. Alan Parr even did an episode with him agreeing and promoting the same thing. But Good Fight Ministries did a great video refuting the problem of looking too deep into Hollywood to find God in very ungodly characters. The video we'll look at today is called Deal With It. Harry Potter is the best archetype of Jesus Christ. And you can see from some of the comments below that people are quite shocked by this. So let's get to it. There's a big speed bump that a whole lot of people have mm -hmm. about Harry Potter, Christian people, okay? Yes. And it was one when the first book came out that, uh, it, I mean, Christians were scandalized by this um, because of the, the, the nature of the foil, essentially, that uh, Rowling was using mm -hmm. to make her point. So why don't you talk a little bit about it and why it doesn't bother you? These yeah. other things supersede it or whatever. Go well, ahead. Well, look, I defer to parents. If they don't want their kids watching something, I'm with them, okay? If you don't want to watch Harry Potter, that's fine. Uh, however, I think we have been a little bit inconsistent because we look at something like Harry Potter and say, well, the occult's in Harry Potter. Well, the, the occult's in Lord of the Rings, too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Gandalf's a wizard. And I don't know any Christian that thinks, well, we ought not watch Lord of the Rings. I mean, right. it's supposed to be a, a story that parallels Christianity, according to Tolkien, who was a very devout Catholic, as you know. Well, there's the first problem. He's saying that Tolkien was a devout Catholic. So Tolkien was very serious about praying the rosary, believed in a fictional place called purgatory, respected the Pope as the vicar, that is, in place of Christ, and we could go on. I really like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but in my opinion, it's mixing witchcraft and worldly things and trying to pass them off as a Christian allegory. And him using that logic to say Harry Potter's version of wizardry is okay is a poor rationale. I mean, yeah. Chronicles of Narnia has some of that in it too, right? right. And we don't say, well, don't, don't get involved there. Rowling says this, she says, Harry enters this magical world and he thinks it will be an escape, but it's not. He said, human nature is human nature whether, whether or not you can use a wand. In other words, she says, the magic in there is just because it gives young people power that they don't have, right? If they mm -hmm. could do magic, they'd have power that they don't have. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really believe that in real life, but she's saying that just, that's not the center of the story. The center of the story is that Harry needs to act morally to save his universe. Right. which is the same thing Jesus needs to do. What? Jesus needs to act morally to save his universe? Harry needs to act morally to save his universe, right. which is the same thing Jesus needs to do. For such a good teacher, I don't understand how any true Christian could say such a thing. In yeah. fact, there are four parallels between um, Harry Potter and Jesus, and this is why, Greg, in the book Hollywood Heroes... Hollywood Heroes is his book, and it's solely his opinions saying that the battles between good and evil parallel the battle between God and Satan. Here's the first line of the Harry Potter uh, chapter, and a lot of people are, are probably going to get annoyed with this, but here's what we say. Arguably, there has not been a single fictional character in, po in modern or in popular modern literature and film that has more in common with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ than Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. People are going, what? That's the one we boycotted. Yeah, I know. Maybe yeah, we right. boycott a little bit too fast, a little bit yeah. too quickly, right? Yeah. So, so well, here, but, are the, here are the four things. Yeah. Prophecy, morality, death, and resurrection. In other words, uh, just like Jesus is prophesied to be the savior of this world before he arrives, so is Harry Potter. He is prophesied to arrive and be the savior mm -hmm. before he actually does. 
Once again, Good Fight Ministries has many videos showing the evil roots of Hollywood superheroes and trying to connect them to our perfect eternal God is just wrong. In this article that I'll leave a link to below, we learn a lot about J.K. Rowling. She clearly stated that her plan from the beginning was to withhold inserting any religion, specifically Christianity, into her books. But apparently the witchcraft or Wicca wasn't considered a religion. Not to mention, she stated that the reason she withheld any clear insertion of religion, specifically Christianity, was because if she put it in, she felt readers might conclude that there was a parallel intended, which might lead them to make specific conclusions ahead of time about how the series might end. So if she wasn't using Christian allegory with Harry Potter, then Frank shouldn't be either. But Harry Potter is definitely not Christian allegory. The hero of the series, the one who gives up his life for others and is resurrected, is also the one who practices witchcraft and who lies and promotes self-advancement over others. The message to the children reading the books or watching the movies is that the Christ figure, if we're going to call this a Christian allegory, is also one who is okay with witchcraft being used for selfish reasons to control others and with lying when it's appropriate. Since these things are never retracted or deemed inappropriate in the books, they are left intact and will definitely plant seeds of confusion in the lives of those who read the books and watch the movies, especially children. If then we are left with a Christ figure who practices and approves of witchcraft, lying and selfishness, we are clearly being presented with a false Christ, something a genuine Christian allegory would never do. This is also blurring the lines of good and evil, right and wrong, and showing us that the good guys use white magic instead of black magic, when we know that all magic and sorcery is of the devil, and we are told to have nothing to do with it. At the end of the day, Harry Potter doesn't lift up Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't teach the gospel in a way that is clear. It uses evil to do good and never teaches that Christianity is the best way to go in life. And it sends all sorts of mixed moral messages to its readers or movie watchers as well. So Frank, if you do watch this, let me start by saying thank you for all the work you do sharing the gospel with so many atheists. That is a noble calling. But please take the points made today into consideration for Harry Potter not only not being the best archetype of Jesus, but not being one at all. And also, have a listen to the Good Fight Ministries video as well. As for the rest of you, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.